This is the Star News Brief. I'm Susan Kiprono. President Uhuru Kenyatta and the 416 MPs will walk away with close to 1 billion shillings in payments of gratuity when the Jubilee administration's term ends in August 2022. Budget estimates for the financial year 2021-2022 tabled in Parliament show that gratuity paid to MPs will have dramatically gone up by 844 million shillings. Kenyatta is poised to take home 72 million shillings in gratuity payment. Treasury records show the bill will hit 79.2 million shillings by June 30, 2025. Retired presidents, according to the Presidential Retirement Benefits Act 2003, are entitled to fuel, entertainment, house allowances and a monthly pension. Get a copy of The Star by subscribing to our e-paper for only 10 shillings by dialing star 550 star 3 hash. Kenyans have been urged to be vigilant as the government continues with genome sequencing in an effort to contain the new COVID-19 variants in the country. The Health Ministry has confirmed that the dominant variant in the country is the British one. The UK and the South African variant have been circulating in the country since January, with samples taken for sequencing from Nairobi and neighboring counties showing those found with the variant had no history of travel. Though not as lethal as the original variant, it's highly contagious and transmissible. On Wednesday last week, Kenya confirmed five cases of the highly double mutant India coronavirus variant from travellers. A forensic analysis placed a prime suspect in the probe into the murder of National Land Commission Deputy Director of Communication Jennifer Wambua at the scene of the crime. Directorate of Criminal Investigations probe placed Peter Mwangi, alias Ole Sankale, who's 44, at the scene of the crime, hence linking him to the murder. An identification parade conducted positively identified him as the man who had been with the deceased before her body was recovered. Wambua went missing on March 12, 2021, before her body was found in Kerala on area Ngong the following day. Learners in primary and secondary schools will begin reporting back to school on Monday for the third term of 2020 academic year that was largely disrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic. The term is part of the stretch to recover lost time after schools were closed for nine months last year. COVID-19's infection rate has declined to 6.3%, a positivity rate that is considered safe for reopening of schools. The term will run until July 16th when learners will take a week-long break. Learners expected to report back to their schools are those in PP1 and PP2, Grade 1 to 3, Standard 5 to 7 and Form 1 to Form 3. The Orange Democratic Movement has accused the state of a scheme to rig the May 18th Bonchari parliamentary by-election in favour of Jubilee Party candidate Zebedi Opore. The party has written to the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission protesting the alleged use of state agencies to campaign for the candidate. It is the second time the Rilo Dinga party is pointing fingers at state operators for meddling in a by-election. In the March 4th Matungu by-election, the party claimed state involvement led to the loss by its candidate David Were. The Orange Party has moved to court seeking to overturn Oscar Nabulindo's win in Matungu. Get a copy of The Star by subscribing to our e-paper for only 10 shillings by dialing star 550 star 3 hash. You can also get more on The Star website.